Welcome back to another episode to Road to a King. We're with another fellow king of ours, Joel, um, which is a spokesman right now when it comes to mental health. And All right, guys, so this video here, this is part two. We're going to go deeper inside the households of your environment or what is needed and also to who you're going to fill that environment with when it comes to finding your success within your mental health. So when it comes to a household, we all know the long age saying it takes a village to raise a child. Okay, and with that alone, I know a lot of us now we may be outside of our mothers, our mothers and fathers' homes. We are now in our dorms, we're in our apartments, we're bumped up with our roommates, or we're maybe with our significant others. No matter what which position you're at on this totem pole, you have to fulfill and create that environment you need. Talk to those in your circle and tell them certain things you may need, rather, you know, just to, so you can fulfill successfully and you can continue to add value to those around you. you know, just to add on, just to piggyback on, you know, what, uh, you know, what was be, what is being said. You know, I I grew up in a household where it was in a way non-traditional, meaning there was not a wife and a husband. You know, it was kind of a two, a split type of household, and so. Um, going back to the, it takes a village to raise a child. You know, I'm I'm from the islands, and you know, some of my peeps from the islands who who know me enough and who was in the same community with me where I grew up, they knew that even though um, it, it was not a traditional household that I grew up in, it was a traditional uh, experience that I got because it took a village to raise this young man right here. And so, you know, it, it is definitely important for the village though that the person is a part of to be a good one because as, as it has already been said, you know, your atmosphere and your environment and the village that you're a part of is a crucial role when it comes to your mental health. So it's like, how do you take from, how do you take from where you left, meaning your environment, the village that you came from, your household, and apply it to what's now? Of course, only what's good though, and only what you can learn from. Yeah, I think, keep it in mind, when it comes to down to foods you eat, if you knew growing up, you were like, man, when I get my own place, I'm now only eating this. Mm -hmm. Yo, stick to that, yeah. and you know, keep that energy so you can create something of not like saying your environment you grew up in was, was, you know, was bad, but you're creating something now new. Same thing when you find your spouse, okay? Like Dr. the great Dr. Miles Moreau always mentioned, when you, when you now are engaging in a relationship where you're building a marriage, it's not two families come together as, as one. No, 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 it's a third family now being added on, okay? So think about even though if you're not growing into that aspect of marriage, think about it now you're gone, okay? Now you're creating your family, you're creating your aspect and your lifestyle alone. That, that is, it's not a pleasant process. The benefits of it though is great, but it's like your mental health, how are you making sure that throughout this entire process, as you transition, as all of these things transpire in your life, don't put that on the back burner. Do not put that on the back burner. You have to conquer right when you wake up. So apply that as you journey on to life and don't forget it, don't put it on the back burner. Definitely. So growing up in your, in your household, person for you, who was that? Did you have that one person where you always were able to open up to? So, you know, it's so interesting because, um, and, and I speak, I spoke to one of my siblings about this and he shared with me like how he, uh, how whenever he, remember, whenever he remembers how I was as a child, I was not a worrisome child. It wasn't until things started to get, the, my perspective on life started to change when I started to actually like see things differently. Like and I where did, you're at in life, like yeah. how your family really was like, wait a minute, I can't yeah. necessarily, I'm not, wait. Yeah. There, why did, well, where are we going on summer vacation? Uh -huh. We're yeah. we going to the house. We had the house. And so, you know, and that's a perfect example. Like, you know, when you have classmates and friends who were traveling, Christmas was coming, and it's like, you know, when you saw that happening and you weren't going or you weren't participating, like, that made you feel sad. And so I did have people, you know, the community of which that I was a part of was a very close knit community. Now, I was young, so I didn't know what mental health was and I didn't perceive it to be mental health. But what I perceived it to be was just me being able to talk to people, to put myself in a position to be happy. Because, you know, and it, it, it begins when it's when you're a child. And, you know, um, again, I didn't know what mental health was and I didn't need to know because I wasn't at that point yet, but I was having the conversations and I had access to those people who would come and pick me up and take me out, mm -hmm. who would come and pick me up and take me and, and bring me to that well, family well, party. Yeah. yeah, and so that definitely helped 
um, contribute to, to who I am today. And so, yes, I did have people, you know, in the community <laughs> and, and yeah, a couple yeah. of people. And then family, you know, I had a, uh, I have a great bond with, you know, my siblings and things of that nature. You know, speaking of societal norms or expectations, you know, I think one thing that uh, I, myself, or uh, my brother and saviors, or just any other black man out there might, what, what we might have to think of uh, very carefully is the fact that, you know, we are often at a disadvantage when it comes to our ability to speak up and speak out. And what I'm, what I'm saying basically about that is this, you know, as a black man, I am not in the position to be able to express myself or really share how I'm feeling about a situation. Me, I'm a very vulnerable person. I love challenges and I like thinking outside of the box. So I do reach out to family members. I do reach out to friends because I am concerned about my own personal health and I try my own personal mental health and I try to help everybody else around me to be mindful of that too. And so I think, you know, as a black man, it is, it is very important for us to, to just fight that barrier or break down that wall. And if you need somebody to talk to, you know, put yourself in a position where you know you have that homie or that friend or that sister, or whatever, and you know you can contact them and just talk to them, and you won't feel no kind of way. Again, you don't have to go into details; you just need to let it out because what you don't let out have to it come out. Up. If you don't let it, if you don't help it come out, it will come out in a way of which that won't be good. And so, you know, when you think of that, and you being the black man at your and you know, your your, your physique, That's yeah, true, yeah. yeah, and and it's like you can't. And like, no at. way, like, yeah, no, yeah. Way. See, no. So, like, how do you, when you think of that, like, what, what position does that put you in mentally, and how do you put yourself in a vulnerable position and say, you know what, that's societal norms, but in order to help me and in order to be mentally stable, I have to do this.